నమస్కారం డాక్టర్ బిఆర్ అంబేద్కర్ సార్వత్రిక విశ్వవిద్యాలయ విద్యార్థులకు స్వాగతం హలో వెల్కమ్ టు టు దిస్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ టుడే విల్ హ్యావ్ డిస్కషన్ ఆన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ టాపిక్ దట్ ఈస్ థీరీస్ ఆఫ్ ఎటిట్యూడ్ దిస్ ఇస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద టాపిక్స్ ఇన్ సోషల్ సైకాలజీ ఆఫ్ బోత్ యూజీ అండ్ ఆల్సో పీజీ ఇట్స్ యాటిట్యూడ్ యాజ్ యూ నో దిట్ ఈస్ అన్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ కాన్సెప్ట్ ఇన్ సోషల్ సైకాలజీ అండ్ ఎయిర్పోర్ట్ ఇస్ ఆల్సో సైడ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అన్ ఇండిస్పెన్సబుల్ కాన్సెప్ట్ ఆఫ్ సోషల్ సైకాలజీ సెవరల్ థీరీస్ ఆల్సో వీ డెవలప్డ్ ఆన్ ది సబ్జెక్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద యాటిట్యూడ్ so now we will discuss the different aspects of uh, attitude the a definition and the components of attitude that is one part of the discussion and uh, another part of the discussion is uh, how the attitudes are formed that is the second part and third part of the discussion we will focus on uh, theories on different theories of attitude uh, that is the th- these are the th- major uh, uh, parts of our discussion uh, we will discuss the initially the first part of the uh, discussion that is uh, definition and the and uh, the meaning of this uh, attitude to discuss with these topics uh, we have with us an expert in psychology that is uh, dr anupama she is from usman university she is head of the department of uh, psychology and also the chairman of uh, academic uh, the board of studies uh, so thank you madam for uh, coming here uh, uh we'll just, we'll start with our discussion uh, the meaning and also the definition of uh, the attitude how do you define the attitude yes sir as you rightly said uh, attitude uh, is a very psychological concept in itself there are very important concepts in psychology and especially in the area of sci- social psychology attitude has been the most explored and researched concept because it pervades all forms of behavior today uh, in any aspects of human behavior if we really want to look at it so majorly social psychology in fact if you see the research everything has evolved out of it uh, there were pioneers there were scientists who have done lot of research in in this area and they have uh, other scientists who have also associated other concepts that are interrelated to this major concept called as attitudes now uh, looking into the uh, uh, coming back to what exactly we mean by an attitude attitude is like an idea i mean generally speaking attitude is an idea ideas it often determine how people will act so it is not something which is very unconscious which is not going to happen just like that there is a a uh, tendency for us to act and behave in a particular way so the attitude becomes the base for this there is a kind of a conception in our mind an idea what what is an attitude so the attitude determines directs our behavior so the general definition if you take an attitude is like a response tendency or it's like a predisposition it's like a preparedness you are already you have you know what to do like there is already set kind of a behavior that is there because of this kind of a phenomena that is existing and we because of that we act and behave in a particular way in a certain way towards the external agents objects issues or people which can be sometimes favorable and which can be sometimes unfavorable sometimes it can be very more or sometimes it can be less and attitude uh, then has which means if you really look at it has a direction it is very directed and it also has an intensity it varies in degrees and also it is referred to as determining tendency so there is it determines our actions and behavior so this is a uh, broadly speaking this is a, a general definition there are other definitions given by al uh, thurston cards and they talk about components of attitudes there are three components of attitudes one is a cognitive component one is an emotional component and one is a behavioral component they three interact with each other our cognitions that is our thoughts what are cognitions the thoughts the information that we process and that influences our thinking they are cognitions and in turn our emotions their affective component 
so our emotions our feelings how we feel about it whether we like it whether we are okay with it whether we are uh, you know angry about it different kinds of feelings that are generated because of that uh, information that affective components also plays a major role and all of these in turn influence our cognitive component that is the behavioral component we act and behave in a particular way so these are some of the definitions and looking at what alport also has given a definition in in a broader sense it has it covers five aspects it is like a mental and a natural state or of readiness to respond we are ready to respond to a particular event or an object and it is generally very organized it is as i already mentioned it, it uh, doesn't come just like that like a casual way it is very organized kind of set of information that is coming out of us in a behavioral manner and we have acquired it through certain kind of experiences and we exert in a directive and a dynamic way that influences our behavior so this is basically the uh, definitions or the conceptual framework about attitudes that scientists have were trying to find out and lot of studies and research has done uh, was done in this area as you said the attitude is a uh, it has uh, different uh, components as you said uh, affective what is there and uh, cognitive and uh, different things and uh, one uh, psychologist also said it has uh, three important elements the attitude uh, for example take the object it involves an object we have our attitude towards one's object or it can be a person or it can anything or a concept anything that means uh, it has one element of that one element is object and it has a second element is judgment yes when there is an object and we evaluate it uh, that involves both uh, liking or disliking yes. or favorable or unfavorable so that is the second element of the attitude yes. in addition to the component the co- components and the other is uh, third one is uh, readiness to act once we of uh, have an attitude then we have a uh, readiness to act yes uh, that is uh, three elements uh, involved in this and there are also certain uh, characteristics of our this attitude for example attitude is it uh, innate or acquired i uh, say people say that the researchers have shown that it is not an innate one the attitudes are acquired yes. so and the attitude is uh, temporary or long lasting so comparatively or relatively is a lot long lasting it is not a just um, it is shorter one so like that it uh, the attitudes have uh, different uh, uh, characteristics and also other one is uh, attitude uh, determines our behavior yes so once have an attitude most likely uh, we will act or favorably or unfavorably towards that object or a person and uh, another important part of the attitude is how attitudes are formed how human beings they acquire this uh, attitudes and uh, people the psychologists or researchers say uh, the attitudes are formed in different ways so for example uh, say classical conditioning is one and operative operant conditioning is one and the social learning like that there are different ways or techniques through this attitudes are formed uh will you please throw some light on the how the attitudes are formed in simple words attitude formation as you rightly pointed out attitudes have these characteristics and uh, they are mostly acquired very less research is there which talks about whether it is inherited but it, there is definitely no conclusive evidence about it mostly it is acquired and it is an inferred kind of a predisposition and uh, as you mentioned it it is for it goes on it is long term it is enduring that is yeah. what we say and it also it has a component of manipulability where we manipulate a lot of information about attitudes about uh, w- w- the kind of attitudes we form which means that we can change it it, it is changeable it is consistently manipulated and uh, the object as you refer to the objects and the the focus on the objects is very much influencing our behavior and we act on that the readiness to act so it all determines our behavior and there are other characteristics like it, it can be very general sometimes it can be very specific it can be simple it can be complex and it has a direction it has an intensity all of these 
are very well organized and then they are uh, presented in the form of attitudes and there is also one uh, as characteristic which determines the uh, change whether attitude can be changed or not but once the attitude is formed majorly when we see certain kinds of attitude is very difficult to change there is a resistance to change and the other aspect of attitudes now having understood what is a what is an attitude what kind of characteristics are there in an in a form in an attitude now we also need to understand how these are formed we have already understood that it is we always mentioned it is mostly acquired now how these are formed and you have already mentioned certain kind of uh, aspects like conditioning we have already i think students must be very familiar with certain kinds of conditioning learning that we have already dealt in the uh, module learning where different types of learning is there one is the conditioning part of it we had two types of conditioning that is one is classical conditioning and then is operating conditioning and it pervades all forms of information processing so we also acquire then acqui acquiring information acquiring behavior is through learning and when we are talking about a behavioral component the learning also plays a major role likewise the different types of conditioning one of the major important aspect since this attitude as a psychological component is mostly pervading into social area it is it is going from an individual to the social component it is a major aspect of social psychology so when we are talking about attitudes and how they are formed we also need to understand how it is learned how it is formed now we are we mentioned about two types of conditioning now the third type of learning is very important it is called a social learning or imitation or modeling here we are looking into other behaviors how they are uh, behaving what they are thinking how they are acting the social cognition point of view how information is being you know uh, shared among all other people around us about a particular thing like as you mentioned an object an object or a person it can be a person it can be a thing it can be about anything so nowadays it's it's, it's majorly influenced and it keeps it is very dynamic we already it keeps changing so we have, have we keep changing our attitude time and again and this is all based again on learning from the outside that is from social learning imitation as i said so it 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 is formed from the in fact if you look at an infant when we are born into this world we are technically called as attitude free we don't have any attitude in the first place we are never born with an attitude we are attitude free because we have not acquired we have not started learning it when, once we started learning when we started acquiring information it ha we have also acquired so many aspects about the social world then the social the components of social will become the objects so the through the social learning we have acquired we have uh, formed these certain kinds of attitudes sometimes it can be favorable sometimes they are not favorable sometimes we like we don't like sometimes they are positive sometimes they are negative majority of the times attitudes for a large period of time was uh, considered as a very negative kind of a thing it's always negative attitude oh you have an attitude what kind of an attitude are you showing is this the attitude you bring to your work these are very negatively uh, connected kind of a words but later on when the psychoanalysis like anna freud and all they have looked into it they said that we we also look uh, need to look into the positive aspect the constructive aspect of attitude we also frame lot of attitudes that are very positive so in attitude formation both positive and negative uh, you know information and uh, processing happens and through social learning it happens and our early childhood experiences they also combined together and this how we acquire it and also many times we depend on the direct experiences that we have while, while we are forming the attitudes and these are different kinds of sources of attitude and there are technically if you look into the attitude formation per se there are there is an integration that happens that is when we we kind of get information from the social world we integrate that information we organize it and also sometimes there are differentiation that we we discriminate we we kind of differentiate between what we are trying to look at so this is this is likable this is not likable this also becomes part of attitude formation and uh, 
other components as we said the learning aspects and there is one more very interesting thing that was also mentioned in, in the formation of attitude it is called as the mere exposure effect here it is like there is a famous saying familiarity breeds contempt the more we are familiar it appears that we don't like the other person but in in behavioral point of view it is wrong it doesn't breed contempt actually familiarity that is the more we know the person or an object or anything we like it we tend to frame one some kind of an opinion about it so uh, this is called as a mere expo the more we are exposed to the information the more we tend to get into that fro form a particular fo uh, attitude towards it so these are majorly certain aspects and uh, how of attitude formation so we have discussed the different aspects of this uh, attitude formation and you have emphasized uh, social learning uh, uh, approach uh, this is a bandura as you said uh, yes. bandura has done uh, uh, extensive research and the found that uh, people learn or uh, they acquire various information or attitude or at anything we learn by observational learning we observe the people and accordingly we, re we form certain attitudes i also we learn and he has also said uh, we acquire attitudes through modeling and he has also proposed different uh, models for example say symbolic model the live model and uh, vicarious model like the different models so that means the attitude formation is also done through modeling yes uh, we get information through modeling like that he has said uh, we can also change attitudes uh, through this uh, modeling right. through the technique and one aspect you rightly covered is intensity attitudes uh, have the important element of intent intensity yes. the project for example say we will be strongly in favor of a particular object or a strong person or an institution moderately favorable or strongly favorable like that that means it has an intensity uh, the other aspect of this attitude is theories uh, different psychologists uh, have developed different theories and the some people have categorized these theories into four there is not a uh, Uh, different categorizations are there but one uh, uh, particular version uh, the categorization is uh, consistency theory is one one category and another category is uh, social judgment theory and another category is uh, functional uh, theories so this uh, consistent theory is more popular and many uh, psychologists uh, have developed different theories on this uh, on the basis of the principles of this uh, consistency one of the earliest approach or theory is uh, theory of balance that was proposed by heider uh, will you please explain the components or important elements of this uh, heider's theory of balance yes sir uh, there are different uh, theories that we have uh, as you rightly mentioned different categories of theories and uh, famous theories have been consistent in balance theories primarily they have studied attitudes and attitude change and these theoretical formulations were based on a lot of research a lot of observations and they were very very um, controlled kind of ex experimentations that have happened and they have been framed in a very logical manner and uh, and there was a lot of ingenuity that is intelligence that was used in understanding primarily i would also like to f uh, emphasize when we are talking about theories it is very important that we are talking about theories about a social phenomena here attitude is a social phenomena and when we are talking about a social phenomena we are talking about large number of people and how it happens in a social framework and it is not easy for a psychologist or scientist to study uh, in a lab situation uh, setting or a controlled kind of an environment we need to go out we need to interact with people we need to form different kinds of methods and tools that are very important for us to give different uh, varied sources of information that can talk about why these attitudes are, are framed and how can attitudes be changed so in a way uh, these theories that have emerged in uh, in the uh, late uh, you know uh, 60s and 70s have are very very uh, significant theories and they were based on intelligent kind of a framework so these uh, theories as you rightly pointed out uh, there are consistency theories or balance theories one of the theory is the heider's uh, theory coming to the heider's theory 
Uh, there is also even Festinger's cognitive dissonance theory uh, in the material there are a lot of other theories that have been mentioned. So, we will look into uh, even self theories are also there, we will look into the Sider's balance theory uh, as it is uh, also famously called as a POX theory which was developed by Fritz Heider in 1946. Now, this theory focuses on three elements, in fact these three elements are in the form of triads it is like a triangle. So, what are the three elements? The three elements are one is P, one is O and one is X. P in fact talks about the person, O is the other person and X is the attitude object. We have been consistently talking about object, attitude object. Now, attitude is towards certain kind of object which can be a person or any kind of institution, a framework, anything. So, this P O X there is a triad that is an interaction between P O X and this uh, theory talks about the uh, balance between these three components or three elements. So, there are two types of relationships that exist between these uh, P O X one is the sentiment relationships one is the unit relationship where for example, sentiment is like P likes O uh, or uh, then P fav uh, favors uh, issue uh, based on the X unit relationships are like it is like P owns X, these are unit relationships. So, re, uh, generally the whole point of th this balance theory is whether they are the relationships are balanced or unbalanced, they can be balanced or unbalanced. So, from this theory what Fritz was uh, Heidel was trying to emphasize is in fact, when we are framing this uh, attitudes and uh, when the based on the balancedness, balancedness and or the unbalancedness of the uh, attitude, we might change if it is unbalanced we might have to change the balance and make it as balance. So, that is why they are called as consistency, they, are, they need to be consistent with our whatever attitudes we have framed. So, this is the main highlight of Heider's balance theory. Uh, we have discussed the, the in detail the theory of uh, the Heider's, uh, will you make a conclude uh, uh, today's uh, discussion? Uh, yes sir. The, the different kinds of theories I am sure you know will throw more light and uh, there are recent theories like self theories and all that. Uh, to conclude here uh, what I would like to say is that the attitudes that we frame in the first place when the research was going on why attitudes can we really understand attitudes how they basically influence us. Yes attitudes as we understood are very organized very directive have intensity and direct direction and they navigate through our uh, they, they help us to navigate through this world and the society and culture and they also create bonds between people and if they have a favorable attitudes yes the world will be a great world where we are always having positive and favorable kind of attitudes. Uh, in the same way one critique by Wicker, uh, critique was done by Wicker and he said that it, it was correct showing that people often acted in ways that went against what they had said their attitudes were. So, uh, the, here is the point where are we able to really understand what is the actual attitude personally of the person or when, when they are actually acted on the environment is there any difference between it. So, there the still research is going on in that, but this is the broader framework that we have already understood and they definitely influence, they have they build our lives, they, are, they direct our behavior in a major way. So, this is a, a important part of an attitude in a social world. Thank you Dr. Anupaman for being with us. Thank you. You are welcome sir. Thank you. Ma karikra malapai, me suchanalu salahalu teli chayindi. Me suchanalu salahalu teli chayvalsina ma chirinama. Director, Audio Visual Production and Research Center, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, Open University, Prof. G. Ram Reddy Mark, Road No. 46, Jubilee Hills, Hyderabad, Aido Sunna Sunna, Sunna Modo Modo.